Hello there, Jose Rodriguez here again with the second installment of the basic printing series. I'm going to target this video to those of you who have yet chosen a photographic printer or a dedicated photographic printer. You may own a regular household type printer, uh, office printer, and really just don't know what to choose out there if you want to really get serious about photo printing at home. But I'm also going to cover a list of subjects that I have prepared here. Why get into photo printing? What is your goal? Choosing a printer, commitment, and the type of printers that are available, and the most discussed subject because of what it costs to print at home, OEM inks versus third party. Now, why get into photo printing? Well, I've been at this since I was 11. I'm going to be 67 this September the 26th. Remember that day. So it's been a few years. So I have always been fascinated by the final print and spent countless hours in the dark room since I was a teenager in the Army for 22 years. That's all I did. I was a photographer and worked in the highest positions and some of the lowest dirtiest positions actually in the field so always been fascinated by the print I have admired the masters you know who they are and the pioneering work that they did in the early 20s 30s 40s and 50s but now it's a digital world so I wanted to find a way to be able to bring back the print but at the time Photo printers were just were simply not available, and what was available was insufficient. The quality was just medieval by comparison. So you have to ask yourself, is my goal when I take a photograph the final print? In other words, the process is not completed until I have that print in the frame on my wall or in your wall. So... That is the first question you have to ask yourself. Don't get into photo printing at home just because you're curious. Have a reason. Have a purpose. And for me, the photographic process does not end until you have that final print. So all of those images that I have on my many, many, many hard drives, the process has not been brought to fruition yet because those images are still sitting in a hard drive. The final thing is that print okay so that is just my view and I hope that's also your view so what is your goal do you want to produce prints just for pleasure do you want to produce prints possibly for sale if you are a professional photographer and rely on uh, outside labs to outsource your work to then you realize that there is a lapse of time between the time you send or email the files that you want printed to the lab in the day or two that it takes for it to get back to you and then you have to open that package with your fingers crossed so that the resulting prints are exactly what you envision when you hit that email send button and you send those attachments for them to print for you now I myself prefer to do my own work because it is under my 100% control. So if I see a print emerging from the printer and it's not quite right, I can go back immediately across to the other room and make my adjustments as necessary. And that is an advantage that you simply do not have when you are emailing prints over to a outside lab and outsourcing your work because by the time it gets back to you, a couple of days have passed, your, your inspiration may not all, no longer be there. So, yeah, I want that instant gratification. I can go right next door, increase my exposure, decrease my exposure, make adjustments in color, whatever I need to do, dodge, burn, do whatever I need to do, just like I did in the dark room when, after the fixer, you look at your print on a bright white light instead of that red one, and it's not quite what you had envisioned so you go back and to the enlarger and redo your work well it's a lot easier digitally because 
things can be saved. So anyway, so that is why I like printing at home. And I do not know what your reasons may be at this time, but those are my reasons. And so I am passing them on to you. Now, choosing a printer. There are so many and it's so difficult to choose and pick the right one that will fit your needs. But basically they are ranked by the number of colors that they provide you in the ink palette or color palette. They're very, very basic. It's just cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. And theoretically, as I discussed in the previous video, you can mix yellow with magenta and get red in two parts yellow, one part magenta and get orange and, and so on. You can mix these colors and you're able to at least attain pretty much every color within the realm of a photograph. But it's just not as simple as that. So what printer manufacturers have done is they have actually provided you with more colors. In other words, more than just the four basic ones. So most basic photo printers will at least have six cartridges. You'll have yellow, you'll have magenta, light magenta, cyan, light cyan, and just a black. The light versions of the magenta and cyan are there to allow you to increase the smoothness of tonalities. But if you try to print black and white with these types of printers with just one single black, you may not have the linearity between the darkest black tone and the lightest gray tone. You may have a change of hue across that range. And that's what's called linearity. And you need to have that. And the only way to achieve that is either with a very, very good profile. You have no clue what that is just yet. So we won't even go there. Or just more shades of black. And so just like I said earlier about the light versions of cyan and magenta, they actually help smooth down the tonality changes within a shade of color. So will the shades of black. So you have printers that then have the primary six that I just mentioned, plus maybe a gray or two shades of gray. And those can be Canon or Epson. Then you have the really upscale printers that have up to 12 colors, including oranges, reds, blue, green. And what this is attempting to do is to increase the gamut or the availability of possible colors so that the printer is able to produce colors as faithfully as possible to what is being sent to it by the computer. And of course, the more advanced or complicated the color ink set is, the more you're going to pay for this technology. So keep that in mind. Commitment. And that relates to once you go ahead and you purchase one of these printers, which will cost you from the least several hundred dollars to possibly several thousand dollars, depending on what you choose. You then need to use it. In fact, the very strange thing is that the cheaper models, you can actually ignore a little bit more than you can those expensive big floor units. If your plan is to print very wide panoramic type shots, 24 inches wide by you know, up to 60 something inches wide. If you want to get into that, those printers are supposed to be used daily. They are daily use printers. You cannot let them sit for days. You will then encounter head clog problems with them. And that is just a sad fact of the home printing or even studio printing craft. You have to utilize your printers. You have to commit to those printers. So in my room I have many printers and I have to make sure that on a daily or at least bi-weekly basis I do something with any of these printers. I use uh, my Canon 10, my Canon Pro 100, my P800, my 3880 and all of these printers that I have, I have to use them. I cannot just sit and look at them and stare at them. So I have to promise that I will commit to use these printers. So if you're going to go ahead and decide to get into home printing, you have to then make sure that you have 
complete commitment to use that printer. Once you get that at home, set it up, get everything calibrated the way the instruction sheet says, you make your initial test prints. Don't wait two months to use it again. You have to use it on a weekly basis. And that gets into ink costs. So, original manufacturer inks are expensive. This is the most expensive liquid in the world. It has been already been calculated that per milliliter, ink is probably some of the most expensive liquid there is. And so that is something you have to think about. Do I want to have the luxury of printing at home or do I send my prints to the outsourced lab and wait two or three days? So what you are paying for is that luxury of having the instant gratification of having your print come out within minutes of you sending it to the printer. And then you can make your instant changes. And by the end of the evening you have a your perfect print hanging on your wall. Well, that requires commitment and that requires the acceptance that original inks are going to cost money. And so that's all there is about that. If you're going to sell your prints, you really have no choice. You should use OEM inks. You should not use any third-party option because your customer is going to pay you big bucks for you to produce prints for them. You would not want that third-party lab that you're sending your files to to be printing your prints on anything but original manufacturers inks and papers so that is my th my thinking about that now if you're printing for your own pleasure and you're going to be hanging your prints in your own walls or your albums then yes there are many third-party ink choices that will allow you to still print beautiful prints maybe they just will not outlive the ones done with OEM but then you could always reprint them years down the road if you still care so these types of options will save you a ton of money and a lot of us including myself go that route and show you the ups and downs of the third party ink and cartridge options there are disadvantages and there are advantages so the same thing with anything so that is it for now. I just wanted to give you these kind of warnings and possible suggestions before you get into this. If you already own a photographic dedicated printer, then by all means you can skip this video and go to the next one where we're going to actually go into the computer and explore the driver settings to produce that very good looking, I wouldn't say perfect, print directly letting the driver control everything. And that is the simplest way to print and one that you do not have to even think too much about it because you can actually set certain settings as a default. All right. I hope that wasn't too discouraging. I'm just telling you the truth about home printing and what it takes to really get into it and be fully committed to it. All right. So please like, please share, please subscribe. Until the next time, we'll be back with the demonstration of how to set up various types of drivers. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate some Canon printers and Epson printers for you and tell you the secrets of how to print letting the driver control color. So until the next time, happy printing and bye-bye.